Hello, ladies of FBC and the community. We are so excited to bring you this new study on Bend It Knee, Praying Like Prophets, Warriors, and Kings by Cricket Keith. We're excited. It's from Moody Publishers, and um, we're going to be bringing it to you in a discussion format. So I'm Valerie George. I am the Fellowship Bible Church Women's Ministry Director here, and I'm a part of the teaching team. I help with the retreats. I help with the events. I do anything related to women here at the church. And this is my partner in crime, Patty Vanneman. And I'm just thrilled to be here today. Um, so I serve uh, with the Women's Bible Study Committee, and I teach Bible studies. And I also serve on the Missions Committee and run um, the Brazil trip every year that we go to as a family. Yeah, she church does a family. lot with the missions yeah. um, here at church, and I love hearing her stories of Brazil <laughs> and running through the airport and just craziness, she, craziness. <laughs> but bring all for the purpose of bringing God's word right. to His people, whether it's in Brazil or it's here. And so today we have the privilege of bringing you to God's word yeah. about prayer, yeah. about the discipline of prayer. Right. And so we just want to touch on the intro real quick of this study. So what would you like to point out from the intro today? From the intro. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things, one of the reasons we decided as a committee on this study was really we were hearing the women in Bible study saying to us on a regular basis um, that they struggled in their prayer life and um, really didn't know how to pray or um, how to fit in time for prayer and things like that. Mm -hmm. Some of the some of the typical issues that even we struggle with, um, how to pray effectively. And so when we came across this study, it just seemed to really touch that need in a lot of different ways. Because not only does this study um, teach us things about prayer, but it gives us models that we can follow. And so mm. we really, really um, liked that about this study. And so one of the things that I liked, um, on page 10 in the book was a quote. Should I, I'll just sure. read that. Huh? Prayer is not a meaningless function or duty to be crowded into the busy or weary ends of the day. Mm. And we are not obeying our Lord's command when we content ourselves with just a few minutes upon our knees in the morning rush or late at night when our faculties are tired with the tasks of the day. Doesn't that sound like our experience? <laughs> yes, that's our normal yeah. day. You're <laughs> tired by the end of the day. You're right. zonked. You're tired. We, yeah. So we can mm -hmm. never know him if we use the vehicle of prayer like we use our cell phones. Um, mm -hmm. A few words of hurried conversation. And that's so true. And that really touched us because that's what we see as our struggle. And, you know, the struggle of the women in our church. So this is what really drew us to this study. I think that's really good because I think sometimes people don't realize that prayer is a discipline. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the Christian disciplines that we really need to apply in our life. And it's not just a panic button. Like, right, me, like no right. whammies, no whammies, stop. You know, it's yeah. not a panic button. Right. It's supposed to be a pattern. Yeah. And so that's really good. And so this study is going to hit on several people mm -hmm. from Scripture. And so our first week we're going to talk about soon is Jesus, and he's a model of prayer. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get into Paul and Job and Hannah, David, Asa, Jehoshaphat, which is always fun to say, and <laughs> Nehemiah. And yeah. they're, they're the you um, did that main... very well. <laughs> I just enjoy saying that. It's so oh, fun. Man. And that's going to be a great week. We are looking forward yeah. to it. A prayer of dependence is what that topic is going to be. And so I like what you said about model. Tell me more about how to use these as models. Yeah. What do you mean by that? So what, what I love, and as I've gone through this study, is first of all, it's not enough to just study God's word. We're not mm -hmm. looking to know more about God's word and that be it. Mm -hmm. If we don't apply it to our lives and really um, incorporate it into our life, then it's really going to be of no value to us. And so even as I went through this, a lot of what I did is at the end of each lesson, I um, pulled out what were the points that the person in that prayer used. For, and we'll go through this with Jesus' prayer, but he models for us different things to hit on. Worshiping, confessing our sins, praising God, crying out to God when we are um, hurting, and we're going to see this in all these different prayers. So there's not just one prayer that we should model, but many different kinds that we can go to for different situations. And so part of our hope and prayer for the women doing this study, and has been for us, is that we would practice it. We would actually sit and do it and spend the time. And so I actually wrote them out on a piece of paper that I can keep in my Bible. And so when I have a need that I want to pray for, I can say, Oh, how did Paul pray for 
They're his friends. What were some of those needs that you have already written on there? Because that was really good if you start from, like, Jesus's. You know, his was general. But then we, when we get into Paul's, like, week two, what was the need? What was he actually praying for? Right. And so as Paul was hearing the concerns of the people, his real prayer request for them was for spiritual maturity, for endurance in suffering, for long, um, for patience, um, praying for salvation, that the eyes of their hearts would be opened, praying for the impossible. That was the encouraging thing from that lesson. You know, to pray for the impossible in the lives of other people. It's so exciting. Well, I think the key of that is when we want to pray for somebody else, mm -hmm. we can look at this model. Right. So for all right. of those things you That's just right. said, when we, when we have other people that we want to pray for, that we know need the Lord or yeah. need something of that, then this is a good model to use. And it so really like is. what about Job was uh, you have for a spiritual attack? Right, for spiritual attacks, Job first models for us that he puts his trust in God. And then he takes his complaint to God. It's not wrong to complain to God. And I think a lot of times as Christians, we know that verse from Philippians, do all things without grumbling and complaining. But God's not saying we can never complain. He's saying complain in a godly way. And Job models that for us. How can we take the complaints of this life? before the Lord in a godly way, in a God-honoring way. I think one of the key things that I heard you say um, was that we take it to the Lord. We take right. our complaints to the Lord. Right. That's the key because yeah. he's the one that can fix it. Right. And when we change our thought process and all of that, then he's the one that can fix it. Absolutely. And we have to yep. believe that and we have to know that. And so that's what these models are. Are great for so that's just a few right. just to give you a taste for what's coming yep. with this on bended knee study this study on prayer i am so excited because prayer is so important you know it i just is. i think of like a toolbox and so i just crack up because you know i dug through my husband's stuff and <laughs> dug out his toolbox and i just think of it because you know, within a toolbox you have different tools right so you have like a hammer like we all need a hammer maybe a paintbrush maybe a screwdriver right? right you know maybe a wrench all these things and you need these things to accomplish different tasks yeah. around the house right yeah. and if you don't have the right tool for the right job then you're not going to complete the job or do it well yeah right, <laughs> right. it's and, gonna fall apart and we feel that way with prayer often we come and we're like i don't even know how to pray well through this situation or, or how to express to God. And certainly we have the Holy Spirit to help us. But we also have these models that we can train ourselves in so that we're not always saying, I don't know how to pray, but now I can pray more effectively. Mm -hmm. And that's why the right tool works. Yeah, it's so important. And, and the tools are what we need to accomplish projects around the house, right? right? If you don't have the tools, you can't do that. Right. To live a full, abundant life in Christ, yeah. we need prayer. Yeah. You can't do it without yeah. prayer. You can't do it of your own strength. You have to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's true. So we're looking forward to bringing this study yeah. to you and getting you to use those hammers yep. and to use the paintbrushes. Yeah. Do not just let them sit there right. and dry out with paint. Like this has a lot of dried paint on it. We have to use it if we yeah. want the room painted. And yeah. so we want you to use this tool of prayer. And so with that, let's jump right into okay. week one. All right. Let's move into week one. So who's week one all about? Week one is the prayer of Jesus, <clears throat> which, you know, is really the, the most well-known prayer in the world. I think most people know about Jesus's prayer, which is found in Matthew chapter six um, and starting at really at verse nine. And so there's Five, actually, there's six things we see that we can pull out as models to use in our prayer time that Jesus modeled for us. And when we talk about modeling, Valerie, I know you know, but we're not saying you have to use these exact words. Correct. We're saying here's, the, here's a format you can use. Fill in your own words. Put Absolutely. It in your own words. And, I, and that was Jesus' point in this as well. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through this whole week. But I'm just going to give you very quickly what those things look like. Mm -hmm. So the first was worship. The first area of prayer is come to God in worship. And that's a change in our focus mm -hmm. from our circumstances to God. And the second is surrender. And that's a change in our priorities and looking for what God's priorities are. 
Then the third area was supplication. And that's a change in our dependence from ourselves to God. And then uh, fifth is confession and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that's a change to humility um, and, and putting down our pride. And then the last area is protection. And that's a change to trusting God. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the overview of Christ's prayer. And so we want to take some time now and kind of pick that apart a little bit. So why don't we start off by just reading that prayer out loud? Great, that sounds awesome. So I'm going to start at verse 9. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'm going to continue on with the next two verses. Mm -hmm. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, I included those two verses because it's really the only prayer of Jesus where he actually gives us some commentary, some explanation of the things that he asked us to pray for. And we're going to talk about that just a little more in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So let's start with day one. We're going to jump into day one, and the day one is about worship, and you said changing our focus, which I think is key. And I just want to agree with you on the intro quote by J. Oswald yeah. Sanders. I loved it. It's, it. You know, he says, pray in this way. You know, mm -hmm. like Jesus says to them, this is how you should pray. Pray in this way. It doesn't mean pray exactly this right. word you know we use that as our model as our format and right. we're going to yeah. jump into that he was giving us a pattern yeah. to use yeah. not that we have to be verbatim with it right. and, and right. it's something i've been working on with my kids is to use scripture in their yeah. prayers and so mm -hmm. here's a perfect opportunity to learn how to use scripture right. in our prayers and make it our own right and that's what's beautiful even in our relationship with god is that you know if he was a god who just wanted rote prayers that's what this would be full of Right, but he wants to hear our hearts. He's just trying to help curve how we use those words so that we're praying effectively. And um, but he still wants to hear our real hearts. Too. Absolutely, he yeah. totally does. So let's start with day one. And I love how um, she just starts the day off with, "How do you begin your prayer time? Right. Where do you start your prayers? Like." Letter A, like where do you yeah. start? Like yeah. where's the starting and, and line? And for often, often we go right into, Lord, I need this, or help me with that. We go right into our grocery list. We do. We really we do. We go right into our grocery and, list. And I think about in marriage, if, you know, when your husband comes in the door at the end of the day, if that's what you were hitting him with every day, you know, there wouldn't be a very loving and communicational relationship. That's something I had to learn. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, we all? <laughs> that was something I had to learn when I got married was that when he walks in the door is to give him a few minutes yeah. to unwind from his day. I'm not saying a half an hour. I'm not saying hours. Everybody's different, but just right. not to hit him with the grocery list right, right when he walks through the door, right. just to give him a minute to catch his breath. And so yeah. she starts this and she talks about bowing the knee in prayer to God. Bending the knee is a physical gesture of worship that expresses an inner attitude of adoration, respect, and humility. And she yeah. jumps right in and says, let's go now on bended Bend knee to worship him. So right. how do we start by yeah. worshiping him? Yeah, and so in, in day one, we focused right on verse nine, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And as you went through, as you go through this study, you're going to see that First of all, we're talking about our father, mm -hmm. that very personal parental child relationship. He's not a God who's far off. He is a God who is near and personal. But it's also plural, our father, right? Our father in heaven. Right. And so we are always intricately combined and connected to the body. Mm -hmm. And you know what I liked about this was that um, it's a plurality, and yet it's singular. In other words, the universe, when we, when we can look in Scripture at Isaiah 6 and Revelation chapter 4, we see these throne room scenes where people and angels are worshiping God. And as believers, we're invited to join in in that mm -hmm. chorus of worship. And it's, so it's universal in that regard, but it's very personal in how I can praise God personally. And that's what makes it unique and just 
um, extraordinary at the same time. And that's why we want to encourage you guys yeah. to take what you're learning here and bring it on your knees to the Lord yeah. because he's waiting for you to join in and participate with those yes. throne room scenes. That's, that's so exciting right. to me. Yeah. I get so excited by how the Lord invites us he and does. pursues us yeah. and wants us to be his own. Yeah. And that is the heart of this. He just wants to draw us he in does. and he wants to draw us into worshiping with the angels in heaven. And, and not just for his benefit, but really for our own benefit to learn to worship God takes our focus off of our own tiny little life mm -hmm. and projects it into something so much bigger. Well, you mentioned Isaiah 6 um, and he, when he saw it all, he said, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean yeah. lips. Yep. And the mm -hmm. angel touched him with a coal and healed him. And if we come to the Lord, if we present ourselves, he will heal us too yeah. and make us right with yes. him so that yes. he will hear our prayers. And, and then we can act on his behalf. Right. You know, yeah. there's that changing relationship. Our I just, yep. yes, changing totally our focus. Changing our focus. Changing our focus, which is the whole theme of day one is changing our focus. Yes. And so to become people of worship, that's the way God originally created us. Sin destroyed that in us, and he's giving us the opportunity to join back in. And, and Christ even tells us that, you know what, if we won't worship, the rocks will. They will cry out. They will cry out. Mm -hmm. And so we have this opportunity to learn to praise him. And so we want to do that every day and start our prayer time in that. And it, it can sound kind of um, theoretical, but in that practical sense, um, it really does change my daily perspective when I'm overwhelmed with the fears or, you know, whatever it is of the day. Um, it changes my perspective in a real and tangible way to start off by worshiping him. I think, so. like you said, it changes our focus. Yeah. So my husband was deployed to Iraq for a year. And a group of us, you know, discussed this and said, we don't want this to be about when are they coming home? When are they going to be home? When are they going to be home? Because we will waste the year of our lives. Yeah. We had to change our focus. Right. And our focus then became, God, how are you going to grow me? Yeah. And so I would encourage mm -hmm. all of you out there, yeah. whether it's COVID-19 or it's something else, mm -hmm. it's having to walk into those hospitals because you work there. It's, I can't imagine the fear that you feel because right. I feel the panic just walking into the grocery store today. Right. Yeah. So I, un I don't understand, but I would encourage you to shift your focus yeah. and adore God. Yeah. And I know that sounds so simplistic, but it's so deep and it, it will really, change yeah. you it from will. the inside out. It will yeah. bring peace. It will bring joy. Oh, a joy. Yeah. It will bring a myriad of the fruits of the spirit. Yeah. And so... Um, mm -hmm. Just to change your focus is huge, you know, and I yeah. love in here, too, it says our father who is in heaven. Yes. Yes, because he's greater than all of it. He's greater than COVID. He's greater than whatever you're facing. He is bigger than it. And so it takes us off of COVID seems huge, but it's small in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. So our God is so much bigger. He's so much more able to handle whatever's going on. Um, and so we need to swing our focus back to the Lord and focus on him and trust in him in that. Um, it, also, uh, it also brings us into a posture of humility mm -hmm. because God is so much bigger and we are too small to handle our own circumstances in our own strength or in our own way. Mm -hmm. And so worship will help us to realign. Yeah, I, I can't solve this myself. I need God. Mm -hmm. I need God. And I love that she brings out Psalm 8 in looking reflectively on page 17. That mm -hmm. really touched me. I really enjoyed reading through Psalm 8. And I love how it starts and ends with, Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your yeah. name in all the earth. Like, I just love that. You have set yeah. your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infant, infants, you have ordained praise mm -hmm. because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens... The work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. Yep. What is man that you are mindful of him? Like that is, that's how I feel when I consider the heavens, when I consider who the Lord is. I'm like, who am I that you would right. be mindful of me and love me so tenderly? But that's what God does. He meets he does. me yeah. in those fears walking into the grocery store. He meets right. you if you're working in the hospital. He meets all of us. And 
reminds us that he is majestic in all of the earth. He really is. And, mm-hmm. and with all that in play, I love how she ends this by saying, worship prepares our hearts to be attentive to God. See, now oh, he's got my that. attention. You know, my eyes, are, you know, remember when your children were toddlers <laughs> Ooh, and they're all over and look you're at like, me. yeah, look put at your me. hand right on their face <laughs> and draw them like, look right into my eyes. Got to get at their level. Look into and my we eyes. need to do that too, don't mm-hmm. we? We need to do that because we do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Do the same thing. So that takes us into uh, day two, which is surrender. And remember I said that surrender is a change in our priorities. Mm. And uh, I loved the quote on page 25. So if you have your book, you can flip there quickly with me. And it's kind of the end of it, but I want to start with that. Prayer <laughs> 25, is... you're skipping days, Patty. No, but no, that's no. Okay. same Go day, ahead. same day, but end of this day. Prayer is not appointed for the furnishing of God with the knowledge of what we need. And I love that because, it, you know, it's not like he's unaware, right? Mm-hmm. He knows. But it's designed as a confession to him of our sense of the need. In this, as in everything, God's thoughts are not mm. ours. And God requires that his gifts should be sought for. Mm. I love that line. I just love that line mm-hmm. about surrendering. Because now he has our attention from our time of worship. And now we're ready to surrender to, it's not about what I want. It's about what God wants. And so specifically in this day, we are looking at verse 10. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so often it's, God, I need this. I want this. I, you know, get me out of this situation. Whatever it is, like we want to be in control. And this verse reminds us that we need to surrender that. We need to open our hands and open our hearts, Mm -hmm. right? To what is God's plan? What is his big picture? And then what is his specific picture for our lives? So this is a verse about surrendering in our, in our prayer time. Mm-hmm. I think it's great because she starts the day talking about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. And, and are we willing to be like him and say God's will be done mm-hmm. even if it's not what we desire? I don't think Jesus desired to go through the pain and suffering right. and scorn and shame that he went through. That, that wasn't his desire. And right. he prayed, if this cup can be taken away, please do. But for your will. And I love in Hebrews how it says, for the joy set before him, right. he endured yep. the cross. He mm-hmm. endured endured the scorn and the shame. You yeah. know, it's just, it gives me hope. And I would encourage you on the other side of the screen that you may not know Jesus knew, right? and for the joy set before him, he endured. So he knew, Yeah. but we may, we, not, we may know, not know, That's but right. what we do know is who God is yes. and the character of God and that he is trustworthy and that he is sovereign over all. And when we change our, our priorities, priorities and yep. focus on that and yep. change our focus to know that he is sovereign right. and we trust, then that is when we can surrender yeah. our yeah. will. Yeah, it's really a dying to self mm-hmm. and living for Christ. And that's what he's called us to, right? Um, and so we need to pray and work through that and work towards that end because it doesn't come naturally. We're not doing that in our own What do you strength. mean, Patty? <laughs> it comes natural. We can all just surrender ourselves you know, to it, God's will, somebody else's will over our own ideas and perfect <laughs> plans for our lives and our and children. We do, isn't and, it? and you know, we can we can say we agree to it in that big sense, but when it comes to the day to day, right? How am I living my life today for Christ? You know, am I have I studied God's word so that I'm ready to serve, so that I'm ready to testify, so that I'm ready to meet a need? Or am I all about me and what I want to do today? Um, you know, and really, parenthood, doesn't that teach you a lot about this? You know, we, yes. we, when we're in our early 20s and we're like, okay, I'm going to have this career and this life, and then we have a baby and suddenly life is totally different, right? And it's all about somebody <laughs> else's need. And that's uh-huh. a great way of learning. You know, God's natural way of teaching us that we have to surrender and live for someone else. And who better than the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Amen. Amen. So a change in surrender is a change in our priorities. Mm-hmm. Um, any other thoughts? Is there anything, yeah, any, um, anything else from this day that you wanted to hit on? No, I, I okay. think not. I think let's move into sure. supplication, which mm-hmm. is... Really, um, verse 11 of our prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. 
uh, give us this day our daily bread. And this is about supplication. And it's a change in our dependence, a change in our into dependence, really, on the Lord. And um, you're right. I did skip it. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it is all good. All right. No, but that's so good. So what we cause... want to see about this, though, um, I, so I read that quote, and I really like that quote. But mm -hmm. um, what I want to see us to see in verse 11, give us this day our daily bread, is really a twofold thing happening there. First, bread is not something that we can live without, is it? It's mm -hmm. not the wants of life. It's the needs of life. And it's not something we need once in a while. We need bread every day in order to live. And so um, it's the necessity of life. It entails everything that we need. And so the first thing we want to um, look at in this supplication mm -hmm. is that God created a world in which everything we needed was provided. Everything that we needed. He didn't create a world where some things were missing that we really needed. And so when we come to him and say, give us this day our daily bread, we're acknowledging that he created everything we need. And furthermore, that he gives us everything we need. And so there's, it's this twofold understanding that not only um, did he create everything that we need, but he generously gives us everything we need. Um, it reminds me of James 1.17, where every good gift from above comes from above and from God. Um, and so the second part, another thing about that is not taking credit for our own provision. And that's easy to do. That's huge. Uh, living in a culture where we're very wealthy. I think we are mm -hmm. learning quickly how that could change, though. Uh, some of us have 401ks that don't look the same today as they looked just a month ago. So as we go to the grocery stores, we're realizing we don't have six brands of ketchup to pick from right now. <laughs> um, but a lot of times our... Um, tendency is to say, well, I make a good living. I am the one who, you know, has the education and the good career, and I provide for me. And that reminds me of a verse in Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 8 and verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power mm -hmm. to get wealth. And we have been a nation that has been so greatly blessed with wealth. And you might not personally feel that way, but I would challenge you to consider that God has greatly blessed you uh, where you are at with provisions. And so um, going to him daily is just as important for the wealthy person as it is for the poor person. That we are humbly saying wherever we are in that spectrum that it's God who provides for us. Mm -hmm. I'm not the God in my life who provides for me. God is always the one who provides. Yeah, I love that. And I love that, you know, you point out that God is creator and he is the one that has provided. He creates and he gives. Yeah. You know, he doesn't withhold from us. And I think that that's very important. And I think that leads us right into the next day about humility. We need to change to humility. Right. And I think as we acknowledge that God is creator, that he is the one that provides. It's not my own ability. It's not my intelligence. It's not my strength. It's God. Right. And as, you know, the character trait of creator, like he created all things and he provides us with all things. Right. That should take us to a place of humility. Yes. Um, that yes. is very important. And possibly some confession there if in our pride we think we are providing for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so on day four, we look at confession and forgiveness, and that's a change to humility. And mm -hmm. so there were some challenging questions on this day that provided a lot of discussion um, and, and trying to seek out. And so I actually want to really touch on two, some very specific questions that she asked in uh -huh. this day. And so the first one is question number two. I'm sorry, let me back up and just read the verse, um, which is verse 12 in chapter 6 of Matthew. Uh, and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And so the question in... Um, uh, 20, on page 26, question two, if Jesus forgave our sins through his death on the cross, why does he tell us to ask for forgiveness? What does he mean here? And so that's been, um, it, it kind of creates a little bit of a confusion if we don't understand some of the um, 
kind of deeper theology that Christ is really teaching here. And so I just want to take a minute to explain mm -hmm. that. Um, when we come to Christ uh, and he draws us to himself in salvation, in that process of salvation, and we recognize, because he's opened our eyes, our great debt of sinfulness, and we confess to him that sinfulness, that we are just wretched creatures, um, and, and our sin nature is just wretched. Um, and in that time of repenting, of seeing our sin the way God sees it, and, and turning away from that, we receive what's, you know, kind of in, in a technical term called a judicial forgiveness. Mm -hmm. In other words, God pardons our sin. It, it's like, Valerie, if we were in court and we had all these charges against us, and we are guilty, and, and Christ steps in and says, I will pay the debt. And, and because of that, God can forgive the debt. We no longer have to pay it. We've still done all those sins, but God's able to forgive them and, and put that debt away from us. It's a very judicial um, thing that God does. Well, I love what you said. You said that we need to see our sin as God sees it. Right. And I think that that's the challenge. You know, I think about my children, mm -hmm. and when they've hurt one another or sinned against each other, they don't always take the time to see it as the other person right. sees it. Yeah. They might yeah. be quick to apologize, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're actually sorry. sorry. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're yeah. really repenting yeah. of and wanting to turn from. That was the other part. Right. Wanting to turn from it yeah. and not do it again. And I right. think that's the key here yeah. is that when we ask God for forgiveness, for our sins, we are acknowledging that we see it as evil as he sees it. Right. Because right. it is. Yes. Because he is yeah. holy. Yeah. He is set apart. He is beyond anything mm -hmm. we can measure up to, That's which right. is why we needed the blood of Jesus to cover yes. us. But we need to acknowledge that. Yes. And, and that should happen in a true salvation experience. Mm -hmm. And then God is able to take the penalty of that sin away from us. Mm -hmm. However... We still live in our flesh every single day, and every day we have angry thoughts. We have, um, you know, a myriad of sins, mm -hmm. right? A myriad yes. of sins, and even if <laughs> no, I'm perfect. I don't sin at all. <laughs> and Me, I need this lesson just as much as you. <laughs> I'm still there. Yeah. <laughs> and even if a lot of those sins are happening right in our mind, that's still sin that we're battling, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so when we get back to this question, why do we have to ask for? forgiveness. Are we asking to be saved every single day? No, we are not. It's more like um, because we have accepted Christ as our Savior, we are in the family of God, right? We have been accepted in the family of God. <laughs> and um, uh, you'll notice that, well, actually, I'm going to hold back on that thought. So when we have these daily sins that happen, why do we need to confess them? It's kind of like in that family relationship, that you were just talking mm -hmm. about with, you know. Um, we need to kind of clear that slate on a daily basis, right? And so when we come to God and say, you know what, I lost my temper with my husband, or I, I was short in the way I responded to this person, and I'm, you know, I, again, I'm just asking for forgiveness. It's kind of a parental forgiveness, okay? Mm -hmm. It's where we're saying, let's clean up the, the dirt of the day, and restoring that relationship with okay, God that is open, right? And so our prayers are going to be heard, and, and our spirit's going to be back to a place where we can hear from the Holy Spirit through the Word with an open and clean heart. And so it's not praying for a salvation forgiveness again Correct. Yep. or a judicial forgiveness, but more that family parental forgiveness from God for those daily things um, that have have been uh, done throughout the day. Well, I think you, you hit on it when you said restoration. Yes. It's to restore a broken relationship. Right. When you sin against someone, you have broken the relationship. Right. And there needs to be restoration for that. And right. so God's reminding us, you know, forgive us our debts, forgive us for our sins, yeah. as we also then have to forgive, forgive others. others. Right, and this is where it gets tricky, doesn't it? It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love how God challenges me every day. <laughs> but what's really cool is that Jesus actually gives us, this is where he gives us a little bit of commentary. So we skip down now from verse 12 to verse 14. And so let's just read that out loud again. Mm -hmm. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And so this becomes the question of, well, what's happening here? How come I'm not going to be forgiven of my sin? And again, it's still in this whole family relationship. First, we're confessing our sin to God as our Father and restoring that relationship. Now I'm offering forgiveness on this level um, in between mm -hmm. you know, those, those interpersonal relationships. And again, we're not talking about the forgiveness related to salvation, that Correct. judicial forgiveness. We're talking about that parental forgiveness. And so if we are not forgiving others, then God's, our relationship with God is still not right. And it really doesn't matter whether the other person is sorry or not. Right? It, People well, have such a hard time with that it, well, part of it. Hard. We all have a hard time it's with hard. that part. And, and you know what? I don't take that lightly mm -hmm. because some sin feels unforgivable. But note the word feels, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is no sin that is beyond the grace of God. God can forgive our sins. However, when we've experienced the hurt and wounding of others, it can feel unforgivable. And so we recognize that that can be a process, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what we need to bring to the table is the desire, is the obedience. Mm. God calls us to forgive. And so we forgive and we trust him for our feelings to catch up, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause sometimes that's hard to do. And sometimes that's a process um, that we have to work through. And, and Valerie and I would both say we are not counselors. Um, Correct. But that doesn't mean that sometimes we don't need counseling in that process and help along the way. And that's what the body is for. Yeah. And so we really want to be sensitive in talking about this. We're not making it a lighthearted thing. No, I think it's important. Um, something that stood out to me in this day's lesson was Ephesians 4.32. And it jumps right into Ephesians 5 after that. Mm -hmm. But be kind and compassionate to one another forgiving each other mm -hmm. just as Christ in God has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's key because we can't forgive others until we understand how much Christ mm -hmm. has been, forgiven yeah. us. So, yeah. you know, when you go through Easter week and you watch these different movies or different plays about it and you see the visual of what Jesus went through for right. us yeah. and then you see him hanging on the cross yeah. and then from the cross he says father forgive them they don't know what they do right that's our model yes mm -hmm. that's our model and it so it doesn't mean it's going to happen immediately like you said it sometimes it can be a process the feelings will come along but when that's our focus like you were yes. talking about change in focus when our focus becomes Christ died for me on the cross. When you think about what that means and all he went through, mm -hmm. then we can begin to forgive others whether they're sorry or not. Because he forgave us before we were sorry. That's he right. forgave That's them right. before they apologized. Yeah. So it's just really... Yes. It's really important. A and it's entrusting that situation to the Lord. And so that's why this is a change in humility. Because whether it's confessing our own sins or forgiving others, it it's a humbling process mm -hmm. in our own hearts. And it's a letting go of that uh, need for justice and entrusting that justice to the Lord. And it's also recognizing that we've had mercy given Correct. to us. And, and so justice, we've been spared justice. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we want to... We want to um, model in our prayer and then hopefully in our walk with others that mercy that Christ has shown us. If you have any questions about any of the things we yeah. talk about today, please leave them in the comments underneath yeah. the video and we will be happy to get back to you, to get mm -hmm. someone to get back to you because these are deep they hard are. truths yeah. and so we're not trying to make light mm -hmm. of it but we have limited time. Right. So, um, right. But if you have questions and you want to dig deeper, we're here for you and, yes. and we want to meet you in that need. So just leave some questions, message us privately, mm -hmm. and we will be happy to talk with you and meet with you. Okay, so let's move into day five right. on that note, day. and that's the change to trust. That's right. What does that mean? What so, are we talking about here? So let's just read that last verse. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And it's about protection, mm -hmm. which, as you said, is the change to trust. And so what we see is, um, if we look at the original language, this word temptation often gets confused. People think, mm -hmm. okay, we're asking God not to tempt us. But in James, it says God never tempts us. 
Um, but when we look at the original language here, we see that this word can be also translated trials. Lead us not into trials. Mm -hmm. And so this petition is not unlike, you <clears throat> mentioned it earlier, the prayer of Christ in the garden, when he said, if you're willing, Father, remove this cup from me. And so um, what we see in Christ is that it is okay for us to go to God and say, Lord, you know, please remove this trial from me. Um, it's hard. Nobody faced the trial that Christ faced that day. And yet he poured out his heart and asked God to take that trial away. It's about trust because, as we saw in the life of Christ, the trial wasn't removed. Mm -hmm. Right? Christ yeah. still went to the cross. And he finished up his prayer by saying, but not my will, but yours be done. And so there's this trust. Lord, we don't want trials. We don't want suffering. Nobody does. Nobody does. Nobody does. And so it's okay to take that to the Lord. Um, we don't have to soldier up just because we're Christians. We can take our pain to the Lord. And we're going to see that in some of these other chapters, mm -hmm. which is really awesome, because this, this one little verse is going to be expanded in many of these other prayers. Mm -hmm. But um, we are frail people, and we don't want to suffer. And so Christ is saying it's okay to remove the trials, but I will follow you regardless. Amen. And then the other part of that is to deliver us from the evil of this world. And so that's about putting on that spiritual armor. So we're really talking about sanctification. That spiritual armor that we want to put on is the sanctification process. So what does sanctification mean? Help us out. That's a big theological word. What does, it, what does sanctification mean? Help us out. So sanctification is that process in our lives that begins the moment we get saved, really. It's God changing us from one likeness to another, right? Um, from one grace to another grace. Uh, and we become more like the image of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And that happens in, you know, in sometimes very quickly, and in other ways it's a slower, maturing process. Um, and it's a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But we work in uh, companion to the Holy Spirit in that process. And so what we bring to, this, to the table in the sanctification process is obedience. Mm. Um, we, we submit ourselves to the word, right? And so we need to be in it, studying it and, and applying it to our lives and then um, surrendering ourselves in prayer and trusting him and obeying the commands of the Lord as we learn them. And that's a fast and slow process over the course of however long the Lord gives us mm -hmm. from the moment of our salvation until he glorifies us in heaven. I love what she says on page 32 about sanctify. She uses mm -hmm. the root of the word, and it, she says it means to set apart for special yeah. use. A believer is to be distinct from the world's sin, its values, and its goals. And I right. think that's key of everything yeah. you just said, is that it's a process in our lives to distinguish us from the world. Yeah. That we are set apart for use by God That's to bring right. glory to his name. I think the root of this whole prayer yes. is that mm -hmm. Jesus would glorify God That's and do right. his will. And so as we look at this, we look Amen. at how God is going to sanctify us That's so right. that we can bring glory to him. And, and, uh, and you think about the trying times that we're in and, and how much greater of an opportunity do we have to be going about the things that we do in our day, whether you're still going to work or staying at home with your kids, um, is that change so that we're approaching these problems with the peace, with the sound mind, with the love that God has transformed in us so that we can a attack a virus with uh, the knowledge that God is sovereign and, and he's got this. You know, all the signs that are out there, we've got this. We don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. Right. God has it. Yes. God has it. And so I can reflect that joy that I might not have it, but I know the one who does. Amen. Amen. Okay, so are there any final thoughts from this week's study? And then I want to know, too, any final thoughts and then... How do we do this? So we talked, right. we had a lot, like this is 40 minutes worth of video. So yeah. let's sum it up to how we apply this to right. our prayer life. So I'll tell you what I did as I got to the end of this study, as I showed you earlier, I just kind of went back and wrote out those five or six things. I, and when I pray for the, when I pray using Jesus's model, and that's just a, a general plan of praying. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you're kind of your everyday or your default model, however you want to call it. Um, there are six things that I want to hit. I want to start off with worship. I want to move into surrendering to his will. Mm -hmm. I want to bring my needs before him, confess my sin, forgive those that have wounded me, um, and then pray that I will move and grow in sanctification and be used of him and protected by him in that process. Mm -hmm. And trusting him to and tr protect. That's right. Mm -hmm. Tr trusting him so to protect. So you can just make that, list that out in six ways. And then as you're praying, you know, put it in your own words, but kind of work your way in prayer through all six of those things. And then moving forward into all the other chapters, you're going to see other ways to use models of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, and just write them down and say, I can put this in my own words, but now I've got something I can kind of sink my teeth into. Mm -hmm. And I can sit here and pray before the Lord, not in silence, not distracted by all these little things, but focused. Focused. And um, mm -hmm. so there's lots of ways to do that. And it's not specific to one wording, but your own heart in it. And so just using it as your model. Mm -hmm. So using Jesus' prayer, right. the Our Father, as your model. Yes. Okay, Our Father in Heaven. Let's adore who He is. Right. Adore who He is, where He is. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then move on from there. You don't have to hit every single thing, but you want to hit, you know, each prayer time will be different. And, so. and I would encourage you to write it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not great at journaling, but I can tell you that my best prayer time like, is when I've journaled. And so, you know, you might just take a little notebook and write these six things down. And then as you go through your day, maybe flip back to that page and, and write out your worship. Or worship using psalms. We talked mm -hmm. about this a little earlier, and we didn't mention it um, in our lesson today. But you can just sing mm -hmm. to the Lord your worship. Um, if you're me, you'll sing quietly because you don't have a good voice. But nevertheless, <laughs> belt it out, Patty. He doesn't care. He gave you that voice. That's he right. wants to hear it. But um, but feel free to sing in your worship as well, or or read through psalms of worship. Um, and so even and then when you get to supplication, another thing we really didn't talk about, but we could talk about quickly is maybe dividing out your prayer list for your days. So maybe oh, one good. day. You pray for um, those in, that you care about who aren't saved, and that's just your focus of supplication on Monday. And maybe Tuesday is all of your family's needs and, mm -hmm. and the different things that are going on. And, and then maybe Wednesday is praying for our church leadership and um, people in our church family. And it just expand it out from there so that each day your supplications can focus on something different. But that's the great way of using a prayer journal. I think that's a good point because sometimes we can feel overwhelmed by all the prayers, yeah, by all can. the prayer requests, and it can just feel like a weight on us. And God yeah. doesn't want us to feel that way. Right. He wants us to take our time and really change our focus to worship yeah. Him. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for this time yeah. together. I think it's been, uh, hopefully it's been beneficial to you. I know it's been beneficial to me. So I just saw you could see me taking notes <laughs> and, as she was speaking, Patty. So I thank you for that. So let's close our time in prayer. Okay. And uh, we'll go from there. Lord God, we just worship you as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And, mm -hmm. and we just thank you for the greatness of your word and how the strength of your word um, carries us through dark days. And Lord, we just come to you knowing that you have a plan and you have um, just a desire, Lord, for us to grow. And so we want to surrender ourselves to that. Uh, Lord, we confess the sin of doubting. We confess the sins of um, struggling to trust and we just pray that you would grow us um, in that and I just pray that you would help us to forgive others as we are living in times of spending lots of time together as families to tend to step on each other's toes God and I just pray that you would help us to be forgiving and help us to um, confess our own uh, stomping on the feet as well and father i just pray for our needs that you would give us a humble hearts that we would seek you out for our daily bread and lord i just also ask you father to um, protect us in these days protect us in our not just physically lord but our spiritual well-being that we would be close to you that we would grow in you and that we would reflect that life of joy and peace to others and I just praise you that you are a God who teaches us to pray. I pray for the women who are watching this video. Father, that you would bless them, that you would grow them in their walk with you and in the discipline of praying, and that they would feel your spirit 
and they would know your peace and that their lives would be transformed as they study your word and apply it to their lives this week. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer, Patty. And I just want to close with the, the um, parallel section in, in Luke 11. Yes. You know, that it's the same section. And at the end of it, he goes on about more um, different requests and things. But the thing I took from it is coming boldly before him. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. as we close up today, I want you to take your hammers and this prayer and come boldly before the throne of grace and put it to work. Yeah. Don't just leave it in your toolbox collecting dust, but put it to work. He wants us to. And as long as our focus yeah. is on the gift of the Holy Spirit, like if you look at that verse 13 and he says, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him, that's what he wants to give yeah. to you. Yeah. So put your hammers to work and we thank you for joining us. We look forward to many more weeks with you. So have a very blessed day.